Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question maximum product sub array. All right, so in this question, we're given an integer array called nums, and we need to find the contiguous sub array with an array containing at least one number, which has the largest product. So let's just take a look at this example over here. So we have two, three, negative two, and four. All right, so we want to find the largest uh, sub array, and this sub array has to contain at least one element. So what are some possibilities we have? So we could have two by itself, we could have three by itself, negative two by itself, and four by itself, right? And the other possibilities, we could do two into three, we could have two into three into negative two, we could have two into three into negative two into four, and so on and so forth. There's quite a, a bit of possibilities. And the end goal is to take a sub array, and the product of each of those elements must be the maximum possible product. And in this case, that's a value of six which you get by multiplying two into three. So two multiplied by three gives us six, which is the largest product. So now what we're gonna do is, well, let's try to understand this question and how can we actually come up with a solution to this? All right, so this is not the exact thing as our example question. So we have an array of, let's say two, three, two, and four. So what is going to be the maximum uh, product for this? And the answer is, the maximum product is going to be whatever is equal to this. So two into three into two into four. So whatever that is equal to is going to be the maximum product. Well, how do we actually know that? And the answer to that is pretty simple. The fact that, so when you have all positive numbers, when you multiply each and every one of those numbers, you're going to get whatever the largest possible product is. And that is given that you have each and every one of them being positive. So that's one condition. What is our second condition? So let's just change up our question. Let's make this negative two, and let's make this negative two over here. So now we have two negatives. And the truth is, when you multiply this, you get negative two into three into negative two into four. And the thing is, the negatives get canceled out. So it's just, essentially, it's the same as doing two into three into two into four. So when you have an even number of negatives, then in that case, you're also going to cross out the negatives are going to end up getting crossed out and the final maximum product is going to be the product of all of the elements. So that is the case when you have a even number of negatives. But when you have an odd number, so let's say this one is negative here. So what could be our largest answer in this? So we have negative two, right? And the possibilities are to have either two and three or just four. So two and three uh, is going to give us six and four is going to give us four. So you can kind of think of the area getting split up in two when you have an odd number of negative numbers. So this is going to be the kind of approach that we're going to take. And there's one more condition which we're going to talk about slightly later. And this is when you have a zero in the in, inside of our area. So that kind of changes up the question slightly a, a bit. So for now, let's just consider when we have uh, positive and negative numbers, which are not zero. So we have two, three, negative two, and four. How do we actually find what the maximum product is? So what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna start off from this value over here. So whatever is at the first index. So we're starting off at a value of three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find its consecutive uh, product. So over here, we're gonna do three and we're gonna multiply it by the previous value, which is two. So we did three to two, which is six. We're gonna change this value. So let's remove three and replace it with the value of six. Similarly, over here, we're gonna do six into negative two, giving us negative 12. And finally, over here, we're going to do a negative 12 into four, which is negative 48. So what is the problem over here? So we actually did find our answer, which is six, but the problem is the fact that we did not account for four by itself, right? So uh, like we looked earlier, the two possibilities we had were either six or four, right? We kind of split up our array in two parts, because we had an odd number of evens. So in this case, what we're gonna do, because we wanna account for everything, what we wanna do is we're gonna reverse this area. So when you reverse this area, we end up getting four. Uh, and by the way, just to clarify, we're reversing the original area. So four comma negative two, uh, this was a three, and then this over here, which is two. And we're gonna do the same steps. So why exactly are we doing this? And the answer for that is because we wanna get each of the sides of the negative value. So now when we do this, we have four over here, then this ends up becoming negative eight. So now over here, we're gonna do negative eight multiplied by three, which is well, uh, negative 24. 
And then we have a negative 24 into 2, which is, well, a negative 48. So what is our answer going to be? So what we're going to do is we're going to have these two areas over here. So let's just call this area A and B. And we're going to find the maximum element in both of these areas combined. So what is the maximum area in A and B? And the answer is, well, 6. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to return the value of 6 over here. And this is for when we have an odd number of values, right? So A and B have different maximums. But say we were to have an even number of negative values, then in that case, the value of A and B is going to end up being the same. So let's just go back to our old example of having two negative two, so negative two over here and negative two over here. So you can see how it changes. So over here we'll have negative two, over here we'll have negative six, and this negative six and two, so this will end up becoming positive 12, and this ends up becoming positive 48. Similarly over here, since this becomes negative, so this becomes negative eight, this stays as negative 24, and this will change to positive 48. So when the, we have even number of uh, negative values, then in that case, the maximum of A and B is going to be the same. So that doesn't really matter. And it's only when we have odd values that one is going to have the maximum while one is not. Okay, so that's when we have different number of uh, negative values. So now we want to consider the case where we have a zero. So let's just try to do the same approach as now, uh, given this example. So let's say we have this array, so negative three, comma zero comma one comma negative two all right so let's take the same approach right so negative three then we're going to end up this is going to end up being zero then this is going to be zero this is going to also end up being zero so now we're going to reverse our array giving us negative two one zero and negative three and let's do the same step so negative two into one is well negative two this ends up becoming negative two into zero which is zero and zero into anything as well zero okay so now when you want to find the answer. So this is A and this is B. And when you want to find the answer of this, what's going to happen is that the maximum value is well zero. So our answer is going to end up being zero. But that is actually not correct because in this case, the answer is going to be one, right? So our sub area can have a minimum of uh, one digits or one value. So in this case, we could just have the value one. But because we had a zero, the one is not considered. So how can we actually change up this approach? So what we're going to do is let's just do the same steps again. So negative three, so zero into negative three, this ends up becoming zero. Well, in other words, it just stays the same. So what we're going to do each time, we're going to check if the previous element has a value of zero. So now we're going to go to one. We're going to check if the previous element has a value of zero. And the thing is, it does. So what we're going to do is every time we come across a zero, we're kind of going to reset our product. So in this case, we're going to reset it. And what we're going to do is we're not going to do anything. We're just going to multiply one by one. So one into one gives us whatever value we're at. And this actually ends up become staying as one. We're not going to do one into zero because since there's a zero, we know that everything to the right is, well, it's going to end up being zero. So in that case, to stop that from happening, we're going to retain its value and kind of start off a new sub area. So in this case, this becomes one and this becomes negative two over here. Uh, let's reverse our array. So negative two comma one comma zero comma negative three. And let's do the same step. So one, so one into negative two gives us negative two over here and negative two into zero is well zero. And over here, so we have negative three and we're not going to do negative three into zero because the previous element is zero where every time there's a zero, we're just going to ignore it and we're going to start off as a new sub array kind of, right? So think of this as a new sub array and it's just going to retain its original value of negative three. So now what we're going to end up doing is this is A, this is B. We're going to choose the maximum between these two. So, well, what's the maximum? Well, the maximum is this over here. The value one is our maximum. And this is actually going to be our answer. Our answer is not zero, but it's actually one. So this is what we want to consider when we have a case of a zero. So every time there's a zero, we're going to kind of reset our product and start off with that value by itself. All right. So let's just go on to the next part, which is writing the code for our question. And that's actually the pretty simple part. So yeah, let's get right into it. All right. So let's start off by defining our two variables. So we kind of had two different uh, areas. We had A and B, right? So A is just the area that was given to us. And in this case, that's just going to be the area num. So we have nums over here and we'll just consider nums to be A and B is going to be the reversed version of A. 
So let's just define B since we already have A and A is nothing else but nums. Okay, anyway, so B is going to be the reverse of A. So nums, we're gonna iterate through everything, but we're gonna step by it by negative one. So in this way, we're gonna get the reverse of it. All right, so now that we have this, we're gonna go inside of a for loop. So we're gonna do for X in range, we're gonna iterate starting from zero all the way to the length of nums. All right, but uh, we're actually not gonna start off iterating from zero. We're gonna start off iterating from the value one. So from one all the way up to the length of nums, or you could do length of B, it's the same thing anyways. All right, so now that we have this, we're gonna uh, perform our multiplication. So what exactly are we doing? So we're gonna go to our array in nums, we're gonna go to the X index, and that is, we're gonna change its value to the current nums X value multiplied by nums X minus one. So this is what we're going to end up doing. And a more elegant way to write this is we can remove this part over here and we can just write the multiplication sign there. It just means the same thing, just a smaller or better way to write it. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing for our B array. So we're gonna go to B, go to whatever is at the X index and multiply that with its previous element. So B, X minus one. All right, so currently we uh, multiplied our array and that's good, but we did not account for the case when we have a zero. And we talked about this. So if the previous element is a zero, we're gonna start off by the element itself. It's gonna be a new sub area, so to speak. So we wanna in, uh, include that. So let's do that right now. All right, so let's just do them simultaneously. So over here, we're gonna check if the previous element, so nums x minus one is not equal to zero. So if it is not equal to zero, then in that case, we're gonna perform the multiplication. And if it is equal to zero, we're just gonna let that number be as it is. It's the same as multiplying that number by one. So we're, same thing over here, except instead of nums, this is going to end up being B, since we wanna check for the area B. And that should be it. So at the ending of this, we're going to have our completed nums area and the B area with all the contiguous products that we need. And we just need to find the maximum between that. And over here, we wanna return our answer. And we wanna return the maximum between the two areas of nums and B. So we're gonna return the maximum between nums and B. And how do we do that? So we can just combine nums and B into its own array, and then we find the maximum of that. So by doing nums plus B, we have an array which contains all the elements of nums and all the elements of B. And at the ending of this, we're gonna return the maximum value. All right, so if I submit this, it should be accepted and yeah, it is accepted. And what we can do is we can actually make this code a little bit more elegant. So it's this pretty small thing. What we're gonna do is it's the same thing. We're gonna write the same logic which we're doing over here in a slightly different way. So what we're going to end up doing, let's remove this if condition. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna have this over here and what we're gonna write or one. So what this or one does, it's gonna choose between either using this for multiplying or one. Right, so if this value is equal to zero, then in that case, we're actually going to multiply this value b of x by the value one. And when you multiply it by one, it's the same as leaving it as it is, right? So it's the same as writing this, uh, the, uh, this if condition. It's the exact same thing, just written differently. So let's implement this over here as well. So let's remove all of that. And over here, we're gonna write or one. Uh, so if the value of the previous element is zero, we're going to end up multiplying it by a value. All right, so now we're gonna submit our answer and it should get accepted. And uh, do let me know if you have any questions or if you have any better solution to solve this. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.